Hello everyone. So this video might take uh, your 15 to 20 minutes of time, but uh, it will help you to understand very basic things about the uh, creating the automation framework from the scratch. Okay, so nowadays there are plenty of jobs uh, in the automation testing and companies are preferring the candidates having some basic knowledge about the creating the automation framework from the scratch level. So before directly jumping on how we can create the automation framework, there are different points we need to understand. Okay. So all these points will help you to understand the basic of automation framework designing from the scratch and it will help you in the interviews as well. So let's start with our first point. Why we need automation framework? So with the help of automation framework, it can increase your productivity, it can accelerate the testing process, cost saving and improve test coverage. So we already know the manual testing can be a time consuming process and repeatedly we are uh, testing the task again and again. Okay, in the form of regression. So for all those regression test cases, you can create an automation script and you can run those test cases in the night so that you will get the results in the morning and you can fix any defect is there. Okay, so we can concentrate on the feature testing instead of performing the regression. So automation can help you to find the defects in the early stages of the development because when you find a defect in the production, the cost of fixing that bug is much higher than if you find that bug in the early stages. So automation framework can improve our test coverage as well. Okay, so test coverage means by facilitating the execution of a large number of test cases across different scenarios we can check for different test data, different platform with the different configurations as well. So by using this automation framework, you are not only increasing your productivity, you are also increasing your quality of your product as well by finding the defects in the early stages. So next is before uh, starting the designing of the automation framework, we need to understand your project requirement first. So in this, uh, you can identify the scope for automation, understand the application under test, okay, that we called as a AOT. Then take into account your time, your budget and what are the different resources we will be required. Then check for the test environment's availability. So there can be different environment on which we need to run our automation. Then check for the test data required for your automation test cases. Then we can collaborate with the manual QA to check their manual efforts and their pain points. Okay, so there can be some scenarios or uh, some test cases which takes more time. So we can automate those test cases on priority first. So before planning or designing your automation framework, consider all these points. So these are related to the project requirements. Then there are some points we need to uh, consider to select the right tools for our automation framework. Okay, so there are different tools available in the market. There can be a paid tools. There can be a open source tools available. So there are some uh, AI tools available. For example, we have Mabel, Functionize, Testcraft, Testteam, QTP, Apply tools. So as per your budget, you can select any one of these. These are very good. Or you can go for open source tools. So one of the best and widely used is Selenium WebDriver. So there are another like Cypress, we have Playwright, IPM, Rest Assured. Postman, all these are for the API testing. So while selecting the right tool for your automation framework, you need to understand whether that uh, tool support the cross browser testing or cross platform testing. So I need to run my uh, test cases on the different browsers, different platform, Windows, Mac, right? Uh, it should have some auto functionality. I should be able to run my test cases in the parallel mode as well. So all these points you can consider before selecting the right tool. So once you select the tool, you require right technologies. Okay, so right technology that means you need to select a proper programming language. We need to select the version control system and CI CD. So in the programming language, Java, JavaScript, TypeScript, Python, .NET, C Sharp are there. So if you are using the Selenium or Playwright, Playwright support all the language. You can use the TypeScript or JavaScript that is the widely used. And for Selenium web browser, you can use Java or Python. Then for the version control on which uh, you will maintain your master branch of your automation code, you can use the GitHub or GitLab. And for handling the CI CD, we can use the Jenkins or Travis CI. So now let's understand what are the phases in the test automation framework. So first phase in the test automation framework is the planning phase. So in this phase, we need to define our automation objective and goals. You need to identify the scope of your automation. You can prioritize your test cases. Uh, we need to allocate some resources, 
uh, that includes the different tools and technologies like whatever we have seen previously overall you just need to create a proper strategy for automation and a proper roadmap that's the planning phase then second phase is design and development so while designing and developing you need to select an appropriate automation framework type okay so there can be a data driven framework ui driven framework or behavioral driven framework or hybrid framework okay so you need to select a proper automation framework type in this then you need to use a proper design pattern okay such as page object model for better maintainability then design the test scripts and scenarios based upon your test requirements this is the next step we should create as much as reusable methods so you need to create your automation framework in a such a way that any uh, new person or existing person should be able to understand your framework by using these coding standards and best practices so once design and development is done next phase is execution means how we are going to execute your automation so we can run our test across multiple environments and configurations so that can involve multiple browsers uh, devices operating systems right so you can run your automation from the local machine or remote uh, cloud platforms like uh, on the aws cloud right you can use the docker selenium grid to run your automation in the parallel mode as well so you can create a different jenkins job to run your automation in the night okay so all these points involves in the execution phase so once execution is done next phase is result analysis and fixing the issue okay so you have run your automation in the night how we are going to create a proper execution test report okay so that you can share with your test manager how many test cases you have executed how many failed and what is the reason of that failure so all those points should be there in your execution report and last is the maintenance phase very important once you created an automation framework how you are going to maintain that framework so you need to maintain and update automation script time to time so you need to refactor the code to improve readability maintainability and performance okay try to continuously enhance the automation framework so all these are the phases in the test automation framework so next point is framework design and implementation so here we need to consider type of framework that we are going to use okay so data driven keyword driven or hybrid framework type then you need to maintain a proper folder structure how we are going to organize your source code utility files configuration files your test data files where you are going to show, uh, save your screenshot logs etc and different components used in your automation framework so your automation framework should be able to or compatible to integrate with the ci cd with the jenkins or docker and cloud so in the interviews you can explain how you have created the pipeline in the jenkins how you have used the docker containers for parallel execution user and docker selenium grid on cloud aws etc integration with the version control you need to explain how you managed your code branches if efficiently using the github or gitlab how you perform operations like committing the code push and pull operations and merging the branches in the git so let's see a sample automation framework so in the interviews you can explain all this point so always start with the type of framework that you have used in your project then what is the design pattern you have used we have used the page object model so you can explain a little about the what is the page object model what is the use of page object model how it is uh, useful in our automation framework so with the help of page object model it promotes the creation of the reusable components that is page objects page objects nothing but our all your pages in your application okay then explain about the programming language that you have used so it can be java javascript typescript python .net c sharp etc then you can uh, explain the different packages that you have created so you can start with the base package then pages or page objects package where you will store your page objects in the base package you can store your base class where you are going to opening the browsers or the common activities we are going to store in that class so that class or that files will be available in this base package then there will be test package where we will store all our test cases okay so we are going to store our test data in the excel or csv so we will require the code to read the data or to write the data into that files so those codes you can store in this test data reader package next package is our listeners package okay so from the test ng listeners we can use different listeners to perform different actions so those all those listeners uh, java codes you can store in this listeners package and there we will have the 
utility package the utils package where you will store all the utility methods the next thing is components so what are the different components you have used in your automation framework so always start with the tool so for example we have used the selenium web driver then we have used the maven for as a build automation tool we have created the maven project uh, to create our automation framework then we have used the test ng framework also we have integrated our framework with the test ng framework as well okay due to their advantages then we have used the web driver manager for our uh, different drivers you can even directly use the selenium itself if you are using the latest version of the selenium then we have used the log4j to store our logs then uh, for reporting we have used the accident report or error report then apache poi library so this library will be used to read and write data into the excels then another component and very important is jenkins so we have integrated our automation framework with the jenkins as well so in the jenkins we have created like uh, you can explain uh, you have created the different jobs from which we are running our automation in the night using the jenkins scheduler or you can manually trigger the build then you have used the docker selenium grid so you can explain here what is the use of docker selenium grid how it works what is the use and advantages of the using docker selenium grid and for the version control again you can explain about the git getter and gitlab how you are used in your project so all these are the common components you will see in any automation framework so once you explain this you can explain more about the test ng okay so what you can explain how you have used your test ng framework in your automation framework so why we use the test ng because we have a separate set of test ng annotation that we can use in our automation framework okay you can explain about the parameterization or data provider how we can use it for running the same uh, test cases on different with the different test data on different browsers then you can explain about your different suite files your sanity your regression test cases suite files then different listeners you have used in your automation framework for example you can uh, explain about the i test listener i suite listener i not method listener i reporter and i annotation transformer so all these uh, listeners i have already covered in my test ng series that you can watch then how we have used the grouping concept in the test ng then explain about the parallel execution with the test ng and different assertions you have used so in the test ng we can have hard assertions and we can have the soft assertions as well and last thing is folders so what are the different folders you have created in your automation framework so as we have used the maven it will give you src main java and src test java all the page objects you can create the packages under the src main java right and all the test cases or test uh, code files will be available in the src test java package okay then you can create a separate folder for storing the sanity suite uh, test ng files and regression test ng suites whatever suite files you have you can create a separate folders and under that folder you can store your all your test ng xmls then we can have a separate folder to store the screenshot then separate folder to store the test data those are the excels or csvs then you can create a separate folder for logs and if there are any configuration file like properties file where you are uh, having some configuration then those files you can store under this configuration files folder so this is a typical automation framework structure uh, that we can create using the selenium web driver with java maven and test ng with the page object model design pattern so it's not every time you will use the same structure in our automation framework uh, it will change depending upon your project requirements okay so it varies project to project so in overall page object model will uh, improve your automation framework by enhancing the maintainability reusability then uh, readability of your automation code so we need to create the separate package and separate classes for our uh, pages in the application and the test cases for those application so as we have used the maven uh, under src main java we can create the package for creating the page objects okay or pages that we say so each and every page in our application will have the web elements okay so all the web elements for a particular page and all the action that we can perform on that particular page we will store in a single class okay so whenever there is a change on the ui uh, in some functionality or in some locators we can easily update using those classes so under the src main java we will have the package for storing the pages in our application for every page we will have separate class and for testing that page we will have the package under the src test java 
So here I have created the separate class for testing every page in my application. So these are the main two packages in SRC main Java in SRC test Java. Then under the SRC main Java, I can create the base package where I can create the my base class to initialize my driver, to initialize my weights, all those things. Then you can create the reports package to uh, to have the code about the extent report. Then you can create the utility package to have some uh, Java code related to the configuration. Uh, for example, here I have created the configurator.java, then database helper.java to or uh, if you want to run the queries from your automation, you will record the database connection also. So those code you can keep in this utilities. Then uh, in the SRC test Java, we can have this base test package under which we will create the base test.java file under which we will add some uh, test engine annotation. Then uh, we can create the separate package for storing the listeners. Okay, so listener plays a very important role in automation framework, right? So we need to use the IR test listener, IR retry analyzer, IR annotation transformer from the test engine. So that you can store in the separate package. Then whatever data you will require for your test cases that you will store in the Excel or CSV file. Okay, so we need to perform the read and write operation to the Excel and CSV. Okay, so to perform all these read and write operation into the CSV and Excel, we will require the Java code. So you can create the separate class for this uh, like CSV reader dot Java or Excel reader dot Java in this data reader package. Okay, so by using all these packages and by storing uh, or having these folders, you will have a better maintainability and reusability of your code. Okay, so any new person will be able to understand your framework very easily. Then let's go to the SRC test resources. So under this, we can create the configuration folder. So in the configurator properties, we can store our URL, credentials, database connection, uh, credential, all those things. So all these configurations we can have in a single folder. Then we will have some Docker Compose YML file also. If you want to run your automation on the Docker Selenium grid, you will record the Docker Compose YML to set up that hub and nodes. So that file or that configuration file you can keep in this configuration folder. Then log4j to create our logs. Then you can have the separate folder for storing the screenshot, right? So as per our project requirement, you can store our test data in the form of CSV file or Excel or JSON file as well. So all those files we can maintain in this separate folder, test data. Then if you use the Allure report, this folder will be generated by the Allure. Then logs will be stored here. Then uh, we will get this test.put by default when we run our main project. And this is the test runner folder I have created. So test runner means if you want to run your project, okay, you have created the framework and that framework or that automation code you want to run. So there are different ways by which we can run. Okay, so in the interview also you can tell like we are uh, running our automation code from our local machine or by using the Jenkins jobs or from the GitLab CI like that. Okay, so here we can create the run test dot bat file. Then if you are using the sales script to trigger our automation, those files like run regression test dot sh or run sanity test dot sh, all those files you can keep under this sales script. And then comes to the test ng. So we can have the multiple test ng XMLs depending upon our requirement, smoke, sanity, regression, or any other. So all these files you can keep under this suit files. So this is how you can explain your folder structure or framework structure in the interviews. Okay, so you can start with what are the different packages you have. So separate packages for storing the pages, the test cases, then utilities, reports, right? Then you can have separate packages for the listeners as well. So you can explain the packages then different classes you have created for the page classes, test classes, like that. So once you explain about your framework structure or folder structure, then you can explain a little about how you integrated uh, your framework with the other tools, like how you have used the Maven, TestNG, Extend Report, how you integrated with your, the Docker, Selenium Grid, or Jenkins, right? So this shows you have a good understanding of creating the automation framework from this scratch. So from the upcoming sessions, you will start implementing this automation framework with the Selenium WebDriver, Java, TestNG, Maven with the PageUpdate model. So thanks for watching guys. I will see you in the next video soon.